Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone welcome to the course on medical biomaterials we will continue on the topic of uh, biodegradation and bioresorption. Um, as I mentioned, biodegradation happens when a polymeric material degrades into macromolecules, uh, but the macromolecules can migrate or they can remain in the body. So, that is called biodegradation. So, a large molecular weight material uh, degrades into smaller molecular weight material. So, here we do not need to have the complete excretion of the macromolecule. Whereas, in bioresorption, it is completely degraded and it is eliminated from the body okay, into low molecular weight molecules. So, example of a biodegradation could be um, ultra high molecular weight polyethylene where the, we are talking molecular weight of uh, 90,000 or even 100,000 Dalton. So, it may degrade into smaller molecular weight material and the material may stay inside. Whereas, in the bioresorption, if we take polylactic acid, it gets degraded. Um, into say small molecular weight even lactic acids is formed which is completely eliminated from the body. So, that is called bioresorption. Okay. Sometimes we even call metals as uh, bioresorbable um, corrosion or attrition of the metal joints, metal implants um, then we get the attrited material which may be removed from the body excreted from the body. So, this could be much longer time. Whereas, if we take polylactic acid, it may be happening uh, much faster when compared to. So, these are two important properties the biodegradation and bioresorption. And nowadays, there is a lot of uh, um, interest in uh, cardiovascular stents. Uh, can we have a bioresorbed cardiovascular stents? Currently, they use uh, um, titanium based alloys and um, they remain inside the body forever. So, can I have a bioresorbable stent? after a few months it starts completely disappearing. Okay. Can I have a, a bioresorbed or biodegraded uh, orthopedic implants? Okay. So, um, currently they use stainless steel or uh, uh, nickel titanium type of alloys uh, which remains inside the body and uh, which remains with the bone. Can we have a, a biodegradable or bioresorbable implant which will uh, completely disappear once the bone has uh, um, really regained its uh, strength. Uh, what about uh, bioresorbed or biodegradable drug delivery system? So, a polymer um, encapsulated drug is introduced into the body, uh, the polymer gets uh, degraded and the drug gets uh, released. So, in all these situations, it is very important to have uh, this particular property. Okay? Uh, so, generally there are certain bonds or uh, bond systems uh, which help in the degradation or resorption. So, you need to know those so that when you are designing polymer, uh, polymeric uh, blends, we can uh, think of having that sort of material. Uh, for example, if you take uh, say ester bond, okay, C double bond O, o this is called an ester bond or if you take an amide bond C double bond O NH or if you take a thioester bond C double bond O S. So, they are easily uh, degraded. Um, either uh, through hydrolysis or enzymatic uh, hydrolysis or acid catalyzed hydrolysis. So, these are very facile system that is one thing. Okay. Another system where uh, we have carbonates. So, we have carbonates means C double bond O and we have ether linkages on both sides or urethanes. We have a C double bond O one side is O another side is NH or urea we have C double bond O and nitrogen nitrogen on both sides. So, these are also de degradable. Let us look at another system imide. Okay. So, we have a nitrogen both sides ketonic or we have oxygen both sides ketonic. So, this is also very facile they can easily degrade through hydrolysis. Okay. So, if you can introduce these type of um, bond systems in your polymer you can expect them to degrade or resorb. Okay. Um, so, many polymeric systems degrade natural polymer or synthetic polymers natural polymers like fi fibrin collagen, chitosan, gelatin, um, hyaluronic uh, systems or glucon, um, cyclodextrins, they all are natural which can degrade. Synthetic like a polylactic acid, 
polyglycolic acid, combination of polylactic glycolic acid, polycaprolactone, polyorthoese esters, uh, polydioxanone, anhydrides, trimethylene carbonate, polyphosphazine. So, all these are polymers which can also degrade. So, I can have a, a blend made up of a, a degradable polymer and undegradable polymer. So, the degradable polymer can have the drug which can get slowly released. So, I can think of a, about different types of strategies. Um, by incorporating this biodegradable or bioresorbable material into the design of uh, um, biomaterial. Okay? Um, so, we, I also mentioned uh, surface erosion that means uh, material gets eroded slowly on the surface um, or bulk degradation. So, in the bulk degradation maybe water ingresses very fast um, and then the degradation happens. Uh, it could be acid catalyzed hydrolysis or cat autocatalytic type. Whereas, in the surface erosion, the mass loss is much faster than the ingress of water into the bulk. Um, both uh, types of systems have their advantage and disadvantages. Surface erosion, the material will become thinner and thinner, bulk degradation material can one day um, completely uh, disappear, that is the bulk degradation. So, surface erosion, polyorthoesters and polyanhydrides, bulk degradation, you have polylactic acid, polyglycolic, PLG. Uh, PCL and so on. Um, and also we have certain minimum uh, thickness, um, if you have the thickness much less than that, then uh, you are going, you can expect uh, bulk degradation if you have very thick material, chances are you can have a surface erosion. So, we can think about both uh, these type of um, mechanistic approaches. Um, then we also have oxidative degradation, uh, in many cases we talked about uh, um, hydrolysis characterized by catalyst like acid or base or enzyme. We can also have oxidative degradation, where oxidation of the polymer occurs by a homolytic okay, or it could be heterolytic. So, in a homolytic, so we form radicals, free radicals. So, we can have a, a free radical formed here. Okay. This can happen uh, when a carbon substituted by an aliphatic chain or a carbon substituted by aromatic or carbon substituted by allylic group that is C double bond C group or aliphatic like this or aromatic okay? or we can have situations like etheric um, or alcohol or aldehyde or phenol. So, all these places um, there could be um, formation of free radicals okay? because of the oxidation or heterolytic where um, uh, one of both the atoms keep the pair of electrons of the chemical bond. So, we can have uh, uh, two free radicals formed especially in the case of amine. So, these are oxidative debris. Okay. So, most suitable sites for oxidative are carbon substituted by aliphatic chain, carbon substituted by aromatic or by allylic group ethers, phenols, alcohols, aldehydes, amine. So, all these uh, are locations for oxidative degradation. So, activated phagocytes that means macrophages, neutrophils release reactive oxygen species. Okay, these activated phagocytes in the, inside the human body and reactive nitrogen species near the implant okay, because uh, they start attacking the implant because the implant is seen as a foreign body. So, they are phagocytes. So, they release reactive oxygen species and reactive nitrogen species. So, first day of implantation almost 24 hours, 36 hours neutrophils are released. Okay. And uh, after a longer time macrophages are released actually. So, the first day of implantation neutrophils are released. Um, so, they release ROS and reactive nitrogen species. Now, later on the activated macrophages they are the second line of uh, immune defense which happens after 2, 3 days in case there is an infection. So, um, as soon as an implant is placed inside the body these um, neutrophils release ROS and RNS. So, they can start oxidizing your implant. Okay. Then after some time you have activated macrophages, they also they are um, the immune defense system, they also start uh, releasing these reactive oxygen, reactive nitrogen species. Okay. So, neutrophils and activated ma macrophages can metabolize oxygen to generate the superoxide anion via the NADPH oxidase, which is transformed into the hydroxyl radical and initiate the oxidation of the polymer surface. Okay, so, both these initial stages we have neutrophils released, later stages macrophages, activated macrophages are released. So, they metabolize the oxygen to generate the superoxide anion through the NADPH oxidase okay, which gets transformed to OH dot which can 
oxidize your uh, polymer. Okay. This is how oxidation takes place. Okay. So, many properties of the polymer which help in degradation like the structure, composition, distribution of repeat units in multimers, the molecular weight. Uh, it may be more easy to degrade smaller molecular weight and compared to larger molecular weight. Polydispersity, if you have a very polydispersed material there will be a lot of smaller molecular weight material which may get dispersed. Presence of low molecular weight compounds, monomers, oligomers, solvents, plasticizers, they may get degraded faster because plasticizers are very low molecular weight. Presence of ionic groups, when you have ionic group you are going to have minus and plus charge on the surface which may help uh, in uh, some of the um, acid catalyzed or base catalyzed reaction. Presence of defects in the chain, presence of unexpected units, configurational structure, okay. morphology like crystallinity, presence of microstructure, orientation, residual stress, uh, if it is amorphous, amorphous material are easy to uh, get uh, oxidized or uh, uh, hydrolyzed whereas crystalline structures are more difficult. Processing methods and condition, how you are processed it. Uh, how did you sterilize the material, how did you anneal the material, storage history, how long you store it, under what conditions, uh, site of implant, where you are implanting the material because uh, um, if you want macrophages and neutroph neutrophils to be present, so you may have to have a uh, blood region. Okay. If you are talking about hydrolysis um, through esterase or lipase or uh, uh, that sort of enzyme, so site of implantation plays a very important. Absorbed compounds, what type of material gets absorbed on top of your implant? What are the physical chemical factors like shape, size, mechanism of hydrolysis? Is it enzyme catalyst or is it um, uh, acid catalyst or base catalyst? Those things also. So, a lot of properties affect um, the degradation um, of your biomaterial. So, what are the factors that enhance more hydrophilic backbone will enhance degradation more hydrophilic end groups also can enhance it. More reactive hydrolytic groups, groups which can easily react uh, with water like I mentioned NH, esters, okay, they are all more reactive hydrolytic groups. Less crystallinity, that means if you have more amorphous material then uh, it can degrade faster when compared to crystalline material. More porous porosity, you have more pores, water ingress can happen, um, so the reaction of hydrolysis can take place. Smaller device size, smaller material can degrade faster um, because they can get attacked from all directions when compared to large material. When you take about ceramics, they are also sensitive to variation in pH. Okay. So, in acidic conditions, okay, like calcium phosphate, hydroxyapatite, all these are bone implant, um, even dental implants, they can degrade. So, acidic pH um, can be really detrimental to ceramic material. Okay, so, you need to think um, if you are having situations in uh, like where the pH is very, very low, um, can I use ceramics or should I go for uh, something else. Okay. Uh, there are many tools we can uh, use to monitor and measure degradation. Okay. We can look at morphological changes, that means uh, does the material swell, is there deforming, is there bubbling, material disappear, can I look um, uh, the morphological changes using a scanning electron microscope. Um, I can look at the morphological changes using atomic force microscope or I can look at the surface roughness because of degradation using a profilometer. Um, I can look at the weight loss of the material over a period of time um, because if it starts degrading slowly the material weight will decrease. I can look at the thermal changes using something called differential scanning calorimetry or calorimeter which tells you what is happening uh, to the physical chemical properties. I can look at molecular weight changes, if the material is degrading from polymer to oligomers, the material must be becoming smaller molecular weight. I can use viscosity as a measure, I can use size exclusion chromatography um, as a measure. Okay. Uh, I can use uh, matrix assisted laser desorption ionization spectroscopy. So, I can measure the mass using this mass spectrometry, I can measure the molecular weight using size exclusion chromatography or gel permeation. If there are changes in the surface chemistry, I can use infrared spectroscopy or nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy or time of flight, secondary ion mass spectrometry techniques. Okay. So, so many different tools I can use to check what is happening. 
Now, we can consider this polymer degradation um, as it is following a pseudo first order. So, we can say the molecular, the molecular weight okay, um, at as a function of time could be molecular weight initial e power minus lambda t. This is a first order kinetics exponentially decaying right. So, this lambda is a degradation rate uh, based on weight average molecular weight for all the hydrolyzable elements. So, if a polymer has hydrolyzable and non hydrolyzable, we will not consider the non hydrolyzable portion only the hydrolyzable portion applicable when the polymer matrix in the initial stage has no macroscopic pores because if it has got pores we need to consider slightly different model. So, uh, it is a bulk polymer and M naught is the initial uh, molecular weight of the hydrolyzable portion uh, lambda is the degradation rate constant T is your time um, from this simple equation we can find how the molecular weight weight average molecular weight goes down with time. If it has got a poros, porosity with the initial porosity okay, alpha, then uh, we just uh, change this equation to m t is equal to m naught e power minus lambda t plus t add. t add is logarithm of 1 minus alpha divided by lambda. Okay. Um, so, how this equation is got is um, at initial time it is got a porosity alpha. So, if you go in the negative time at some point the porosity could be 0 uh, that means you have a solid bulky material. So, this T add is the time taken for it to reach from 0 porosity to porosity of alpha that is what this is actually. So, if the polymer and is a bulky material okay, there are no uh, pores we can use this equation for determining the change in the weight average molecular weight as a function of time. If it has got initial porosity then we can use this equation to calculate the weight change in the weight of average molecular weight as a function of time. Okay. So, if I know the lambda um, I can follow the molecular weight and we assume it to be exponential this is based on this particular reference. Okay. Um, there is something called autocatalysis, autocatalysis is initially the rate of degradation could be slow as you keep forming some maybe acidic products or ionic products these may be catalyzing the reaction further and further. So, the rate of reaction may be picking up very fast. Okay. So, autocatalysis accelerates local hydrolysis thus affecting the degradation rate of polymer devices. So, the extent of autocatalysis is governed by the diffusion process and also it depends on the device size okay. and the critical polymer thickness is should be less than 10 to 15 micrometer at which the theoretical autocatalysis free degradation can be approximately achieved. So, um, if you have very thin material okay, less than 10 to 50 micrometer then we can say autocatalysis may not be happening, but if you have thicker material uh, we can say um, autocatalysis can be happening if uh, the degradation products are uh, um, like um, acidic like uh, if you take polylactic acid when it degrades it gives you out lactic acid which is acidic which may enhance the degradation further and further. So, your rate of uh, degradation picks up very fast initially degradation could be slow then the rate picking up very fast. Okay, that is called autocatalysis. You can have enzymatic degradation, enzyme has to get adsorbed then degradation can start like in collagen. Collagen monomers in solution are digested according to Michaelis Menten kinetics. So, you remember Michaelis Menten kinetics for enzyme uh, okay, reaction. The degradation of fibrillal collagen depends on its age. Freshly reconstituted collagen fibrils behave similar to diluted because cross links can still be hydrolyzed rather easily. So, when it is freshly made the cross links can be easily um, hydrolyzed okay, whereas, if it becomes older and older the cross link becomes very strong okay, then it is very difficult for you to degrade. And degradation of fibril collagen samples with more stable bonds or a higher degree of cross linking is hyperbolically dependent on enzyme concentration. So, we need to have more and more and more enzyme concentration to degrade very old collagen or if it is highly cross linked whereas, new collagen and if it is less easily cross linked it can be hydrolyzed. Okay. So, here um, we need enzymatic whereas, in the other one we can have hydrolysis. So, if you are talking about enzymatic degradation we need to have the enzyme adsorbed and then degradation. So, we can assume Langmuir type of adsorption 
combined with degradation. Okay. So, where adsorption is faster uh, than degradation, okay. so we can consider this type of reaction V naught, where V naught is the rate of uh, um, reaction is equal to K E naught A divided by E naught plus 1 by K D, 1 by K D is equal to K M, K is the degradation rate. Um, e naught is equal to the E plus E A, because enzyme may get adsorbed on the polymer surface, but not all adsorbed enzyme molecules must lead to enzyme substrate complex. That means, uh, not all the um, enzyme that gets adsorbed will take part in the reaction, because there could be some enzyme which may be adsorbed, but uh, it is not uh, going to hydrolyze the surface, okay. because adsorption can also occur at sites which cannot be cleaved. So, we may have on the polymer surface some sites which may be um, cleavable, some sites which are not cleavable, but your enzyme may get adsorbed in so many different places also. Okay. So, we need to consider that, those aspects here. So, we are talking about adsorption and reaction of the polymer. Okay. So, we are considering Langmuir adsorption and we are considering a Michaelis Menten type of uh, reaction. Okay. Okay, Let us look at a couple of problems, very simple problems, but it gives you an idea about what uh, happens to degradation. Because when you do degradation, you may increase pore size, when you do degradation, the polymer strength also may increase. So, is it advisable? We need to consider and whether the polymer strength goes down much lower than what is really um, you would like to have. An implant made up of a polymer with an initial porosity of 5 percent is undergoing bioresorption. That means, it is slowly disappearing. So, that its porosity is increasing like this you know. So, initial porosity is uh, 5 percent. So, the porosity is decreasing as a function of time. So, there is some uh, constant. This is called degradation rate constant. So, this is an exponential. This is a equation obtained like this. So, K n is the degradation rate constant based on number average molecular weight. This is 0 0.02 per month and this has got a unit of per month because you have time here. right? The modulus of the dense polymer without any pores is 3.5 giga Pascal. That means, without any pores. Um, calculate the model, modulus of this material after 5 years. Use white model. Okay. So, modulus is also very important because uh, the strength, uh, tensile strength will change depending upon the modulus and as the polymer starts uh, a degrading uh, bioresorption, so the uh, porosity increases, so the modulus will keep decreasing. Now, the Voigt model states modulus of a biomaterial is combination of uh, modulus of air uh, and modulus of polymer. Uh, the initial porosity is 5 percent, so modulus of air into 0 0.05, so we can neglect this term. So, modulus of polymer A um, into 1 minus 0 0.05. Okay, because 95 percent is material, 5 percent is air, that is initial. So, when I put modulus of polymer here as 3.5 and this is 0.95, I get 3.325 giga Pascal. Do you understand? This is the white model. White model assumes it to be um, a, a addition, linear addition. So, if you have porous material, uh, we can neglect uh, that uh, porosity of that material we take the remaining porosity and then multiply the modulus of the polymer to get the modulus of the biomaterial. Now, there is a degradation, so phi keeps increasing. What is happening to the modulus after 5 years? Okay. So, porosity when t is 60 months, 5 years, uh, so 5 into 12 is 60. So, we put in these terms 0 0.05, okay. then this is 1 minus uh, 0 0.05 into 1 plus exponent of minus 2 into point um, 0 0.02 is this term into 60 minus 2 into exponent of minus point zero two into 60 that gives you 0 0.5139. So, the you see the porosity uh, has increased from uh, point zero 0.05 uh, after 5 years it has become 0 0.513. So, almost 50 percent of the material is porous. Now, we need to put it in the voids model. Um, so, that 51 percent uh, uh, will not contribute to the modulus of the biomaterial, the remaining 49 percent will contribute. So, the modulus of the biomaterial after 60 months, so modulus of air into 0 0.5139 plus modulus of polymer into 1 minus 0 0.5139 that gives you 1.7 giga Pascal. So, what has happened? Uh, the modulus of the biomaterial has gone down in 5 years from 3.3 giga Pascal to 1.7 almost half. So, um, is it desirable? 
that is what you have to see. So, if you have a material um, and it is losing its modulus, so its strength is going down. So, we need to see whether it is desirable or not desirable. So, depending upon the type of uh, application, type of situation and so on. Let us look at another problem. Okay. A polymeric biomaterial of circular cross section of modulus 4 giga Pascal is under constant force. Okay. So, uh, especially maybe in orthopedic situations, the force acting on it is 100 Newton, its original diameter is 2 mm and it is degraded at the rate of diameter equal to diameter exponent minus k into time. Okay. k is 0 0.002 per month. So, the diameter is becoming smaller and smaller. So, obviously, cross sectional area is becoming smaller and smaller. Okay. Um, so, the force acting on it is 100 Newton. Okay. So, uh, it is got a 4 giga Pascal. So, obviously, stress is going to change. What will be the increase in stress after 3 and 5 years? Okay. 3 years is 36 months, 5 years is 60 months. So, original diameter is 2 mm. Um, so, diameter changes as a function of e power minus 0 0.002 into 36, it becomes so the diameter has become 1.86 mm. Whereas, if you take 5 years, that is 60 months. So, if you put here, the diameter has become 1.77 mm. So, area is pi d square by 4. Uh, so, diameter is this, uh, original area is 3.14 mm square. After uh, 3 years, it has become 2.72 mm square after 60 months it has become 2.47 mm square. Stress is uh, Newton per area right and uh, that is 100 Newton okay, the force is constant whether it is 0 year or 3rd year or 5th year. So, 31.84 okay, force by area, uh, force is 100 by area stress. Um, then force by area 100 by 2.72, force by area 100. So, the stress as you can see is increased uh, from 31.84 Newton per millimeter square to 36.7, 15 percent increase in 3 years and um, 40.47 Newton per millimeter square that is 27 percent increase in 5 years. Okay, the, so, the stress has increased on the biomaterial at constant force in 3 years and 5 years almost in 5 years it is gone up by 27 percent. So, we do not know whether it is desirable or not desirable, will it cause any issues. So, you need to um, see depending upon the situation where you have. Okay. So, in a places where uh, this type of degradation is not desired, um, as you can see in this particular example, stress has gone up uh, uh, to almost 27 percent. Okay. So, uh, we need to consider what to do if that is not desirable. Okay, so, in the past two classes, we talked quite a lot about uh, biodegradation and bioresorption, what type of functional groups enhance and we looked at autocatalysis, we looked at bulk degradation and surface degradation, we looked at uh, functional groups which lead to um, this type of biodegradation. Um, then uh, we looked at very simple problems, but they are very, very useful for you to understand um, what can happen to some of the mechanical properties when there is a degradation both in the case of bulk as well as in the case of surface erosion. Okay. Thank you very much for your time.